Hey y'all, Data Guy here. Uh, and today I'm here for kind of a targeted video on a really, really cool new Airflow 3.0 feature. Um, watch our Data Asset Watchers. Um, and Data Asset Watchers are basically kind of the first pass implementing ways to have external triggers uh, cause events within Airflow. Um, and so you can see here, I have an example DAG in the docs, and I'm gonna, don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to build your own so this isn't just going through the docs video. Um, but essentially what, what this uh, asset does is you know, you'll have an asset that you define. Um, in this case, this is just a file delete trigger. So this is one of the kind of basic standard triggers that are now being included within Airflow, um, where if a file is deleted with a given path, then it will trigger uh, a DAG to run. And so here you can see we have a schedule um, and it is based off of just this very simple asset, which we've defined the trigger as the file delete trigger. We've defined the file path. That's then passed into the asset. So this is the new data asset object, has a subclass for watchers, where you have this asset watcher here, where you define the name of it, the trigger, um, and then within the trigger, you define what to look for. Um, so in this very basic example, um, you have a trigger just based on file deletion. Uh, and this really solves the problem of Airflow data sets, which was, you know, if you have an update that occurs to a data set that isn't started by a DAG or a task, you have no way to see that. Um, so this now allows you to have Airflow data sets or DAGs that depend on events occurring that are triggered by operations that occur you know, outside of Airflow's purview. Um, so for example, and what I'm going to go through in this uh, uh, video today is an Amazon SQS queue, but also um, something that was just released and added um, to Airflow um, in a new uh, release. So in GitHub, and fingers crossed this gets pushed out, um, you have the new Kafka message queue provider. Um, so the ability to now have Kafka messages that will actually uh, trigger um, a Airflow DAG to appear when a new uh, message gets populated to a particular Kafka stream. So that's all the preamble. Um, if you enjoy these videos, I implore you to please like and subscribe and please uh, join my Patreon. It's free and you can see all my videos a week ahead of time. Um, but without further ado, I'm going to take it into VS Code and show you how you can implement these within your own Airflow environment with an example using that SQS queue. So the first thing we're going to do is just create a new Airflow 3.0 environment with the Astro CLI. So here we're just going to go to CD Desktop, Guy repos and then make a directory uh, data or let's call it asset watcher cd into there and then open it up in vs code so go on to asset, asset watcher here awesome um, and then within this we're just going to run astro dev init that's what i forgot to run there uh, and this will just generate all the folders we need to run airflow on our local machine um, so first thing we're going to need to do is just go to our requirements file. So first thing we'll do is just go to our requirements.txt file um, and we'll just add the Amazon provider and the common messaging provider to import just the common messaging packaging um, we'll need for those event triggers. Um, and then we'll also have the Amazon provider because we're going to be using Amazon SQS. So we'll need an Amazon connection. Then we'll go into start writing our DAG. Um, so here we'll call this asset watcher sqs.py um, and then we can start building our DAG out. And the first thing we're going to want to import um, are just a series of different packages. Um, so here we have the message queue trigger, um, which is the obviously the queue that we're going to use to trigger uh, that message um, from uh, in SQS, so this is just something that's going to trigger an SQS trigger uh, and then process it. Um, and then we also have our Airflow SDK where we're importing the asset, asset watcher, DAG, and task, importing date, time, JSON, and JSON to code error just for handling uh, JSON information um, and also date time for handling dates gracefully. And then what we'll do is add an AWS connection ID. And so you can just call this, you know, AWS default here. Um, and then what you'll what we'll do next is actually create a trigger that's going to pull SQS um, and just delete every message just kind of as a, uh, a bit of a cleanup operation here. Um, so here we're going to 
have this message trigger uh, queue trigger in AWS where we have a queue um, right here where it's going to pull uh, for SQS and just see, hey, has a message arrived? Um, and so this is going to be the mechanism that's actually going to be calling SQS every 30 seconds um, and saying, hey, has a new message arrived within SQS? If so, then what we're going to do is trigger our new data asset. So here what we're going to do is define a data asset. Um, so the SQS asset with the email queue asset as a name. Um, and then we're going to define the SQS asset here um, under SQS email watcher with a trigger here as well. Um, and then we're going to also um, now just start defining our DAG. So we just need to define the trigger, which is just this uh, Amazon endpoint um, and then an asset. And then now in our DAG, um, we can use that asset as a schedule. Um, so similarly to how you'd use data assets of any other kind as, as a schedule to have them trigger upon an update to that data asset. Same thing for SQS updates but, or assets or any other kind of external asset. But instead of you know a DAG updating them, obviously they are updated by this trigger op object, which is going to actually check uh, and make sure, hey, has a, a file arrived within this SQS queue. Um, so then what we're going to do is basically just define a simple task just so I can show you how to handle then um, the actual SQS message and get information from that asset. Um, so the first thing we do here is, you know, just print kind of uh, a list of events from our SQS queue. Um, so here we're just going to triggering asset events dot get. So this is going to trigger to find the asset um, or, you know, get that message from that queue. Um, and then get that SQS asset specifically. Um, and then here, print the number of events there. Um, so check for the number of events that have occurred within that SQS queue. And then what we'll define is some logic here for processing the event. Um, so here for every event in you know, array events, um, we are going to get out the raw string. Um, so here, getting the body, um, so decoding it from that JSON uh, body and just bring it as a string, um, skipping, and then also having the logic here to skip empty or white space only bodies. Um, and then also just trying to decode or parse that JSON safely, throwing any decode errors, um, and then returning it as a dictionary. So it's safe to use for downstream processes. So it's really easy to then take the results of these data assets, anything that's triggered them, um, and then use the information downstream, use that data downstream um, for any kind of downstream actions, you know, any further processing within that pipeline. Um, and so that is just a simple process and send, um, you know, just really showing you how, hey, I can have an SQS queue um, that will look at, uh, or, you know, a trigger that'll look at this SQS queue whenever an update occurs there, then it's going to trigger the rest of my DAG um, to start running um, and get any information from, uh, you know, those messages that had appeared since it last pulled 30 seconds before. Um, so really massive strides here from the inclusion of this um, to have Airflow actually be a true event-driven scheduling uh, or, you know, kind of alternative um, and just integrating with the rest of your data pipelines, um, you know, making it easier to have external events that update a data set that change a data set in some way uh, and then having a series of downstream actions that occur based on that. Um, before you, know, you kind of had to get hacky with it. Now it's really a first class process with an airflow. Um, and so super useful uh, for you know, just really any kind of you know, event driven workflow that you might be designing. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Just you know, a nice little quick one just to go through the new feature. Um, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.